Welcome back to Lit vs. Genre, everyone. I am Steve. And I am Jeff. And we are back here with <laughs> Wheel of Time, jumping into Chapter 25, The Traveling People. Yes. Are Good they all back. people, though? Are they all people? <laughs> no, would be my argument. Is this a new symbol, This little uh, these leaves? Uh, I don't think so. I think we've gotten oh, really? a tri for a leaf before. Oh, okay. um, Wait, what did you say? A tri what leaf? It was like a trifoil leaf, I want to say that it's called. Oh, cool. um, I feel like we have one because there was like a story, but I could be wrong. Now, now I'm literally flicking back and checking. I'm like, <laughs> I feel I like know. it's new. I didn't think about it until just now, but I feel like it's new. Wait, I'm well, pretty sure. Well, but I'll, I'll, I'll just be flipping while we talk. While you check that, I wanted to tell you, Jeff, for a, in a shining, extremely brief moment, I thought... <laughs> Bella was going to be the POV character for this <laughs> chapter. We talked I about hoped that. It. We did. I we hoped did. it. And the first word is Bella. Oh. Bella walked along placidly. I'm like, yes, we are in Bella's head, which we are Deal. kind Deal. of. Deal. Like, we're getting, like, kind of like Bella's opinions on, on all sorts of things. <laughs> I mean, we, get the, we, get, we get the wolves' opinions on stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, which is that's cool. true. That's true. <laughs> What well, was um, about the stup stupid dogs giving up their freedom to lay by fire? Stupid um, dogs. Yeah, so we do get that, for the record, just so it's there, we do get that symbol in Chapter 16, The Wisdom. Oh, when the wisdom showed off, we have some leaves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Cool. So, yeah, so we're um, we're going along on our journey. We're back with in, in parents POV, um, yep. hanging out with Elias and, and doing our journey um he's uh you know being one with the wolves here even even like this early he knows where mm -hmm. where these wolves at at all times right. um right, right. so yeah what else kind of <laughs> happens here right the bella rolls her eyes at elias so i mean bella's being quite the uh, quite the sassy <laughs> horse today right yeah, we see some we see some patterns uh, with this. Um, I, I would say that one we see that pattern of sort of like telling us about a journey, like back and forth, right? Like we talk about it being three days, but then we see kind of what the journey is like. So we see sort of that pat that travel storytelling pattern again, um, which I continue to enjoy personally. Uh, but the other thing um, that I think we get early here uh, is this um, the want to avoid power, right? Um, that mm. we get, we get that like Elias is good for them. Like they're doing better with Elias and the wolves than they were on their own, right? Like he's mm -hmm. killing food, they're eating better. Um, but Perrin thinks that he would much rather not be with them, right? So we get this similar to what we've seen uh, before, at least from Rand's POV. This idea of uh, you know not wanting to be well, even from them not wanting to be around Moraine, even though they're do obviously doing better with Moraine, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> battling the forces of the Dark Ones. So I think we see this sort of continued uh, not wanting to be with someone that's helping them, but represents something that's weird and strange and outside the norm for them. Well, that is a funny comparison because, like, <laughs> I would say, like, with Elias, you you do understand why. Like, he is just, like, a <laughs> gruff <laughs> frankly yeah, sure. kind of an asshole you know especially like right here with the Gwade where like <laughs> no yeah he's just like messing with this girl it's like oh big tough wolf man like messing with this girl i was kind of like come on right. <laughs> um and so like i mean you get that and not even all the wolves are like on board with them you know sure, which would, sure. would would make you considerably more nervous i would think than hanging out with you know the hated wizard lady or whatever i don't know they're pretty hated <laughs> they're pretty, they are <laughs> I, I i've learned it um so i also wanted to comment on dreams again because we cannot escape right. dreams uh at any nope. point in this novel and nope. so i thought it was interesting now poor parent <laughs> My friend has to deal with, like, dreams coming at him from all angles because I assume, and I think he does say, oh, yeah, that he still has, like, Dark One dreams, Balsamon dreams, but he also has wolf dreams now at this um, point. And I was like, good lord. Doesn't no, he? It, 
Uh, almost, almost. It's, it's that he doesn't dream of the Dark One anymore, and instead he dreams of wolves. Okay, so now he's dreaming of wolves and not... Yeah. So that's interesting. Like, So, yeah. like, wolf dreams are enough to kick Balzaman dreams yeah. out of his head? Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it, it does present that sort of was like a, a curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. Especially where uh, the way it describes the way the wolves are standing. Um, how they're, like, sitting, guarding, you mm, know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, that, that is something that I do enjoy where, uh, I, I mean, we can say what we want about dreams, of course, because we've had that conversation. Uh, but uh, I, I like this idea of there being, yeah, these different types of dreams or uh, different ways in which the dreams work, where he's been invaded for a while by Bialzman, and now he's not, and the question of, like, why, but he's with these wolves, and now they're in his dreams, and they're why like what's up with this right i think that presents some fun questions personally yeah i mean well i mean is it a question <laughs> he's he's a wolf boy so of course like wolves <laughs> protect him i don't i don't really right. this isn't like a super mystery you know why this is no. happening uh oh, no i didn't mean it's mystery while the wolves are there but just like the wolves relationship to balzaman you know what i mean mm. like um like you were saying are wolves enough to kick that dream like is right. this going to keep working right like that sort of thing well right now i'm assuming wolves good <laughs> dark one bad now i have made blanket sure. blanket assumptions like this before <laughs> and have been proven wrong um team dark one kind of fall apart though um you know tom might still be on team dark one but we're gonna of course we're gonna leave that open uh Obviously. but this this I, I will say like when you use dream in this way like it's one paragraph we're in we're out yeah. we're not mm -hmm. like plodding through this whole dream sequence you know makes it a lot more palatable and i think the way to go yeah. um when you're doing that in fact i don't think you've read it yet but when we uh when we do lolita there's a there's a a smidge a smooge Ooh. of a dream <laughs> um in there so uh we can compare Oh, cool. I look forward to that. And we had talked before about the comparability between the two, so that'll yeah. be exciting. Hey. Yeah, a few things to compare, I think. So, again, trying to awesome. bait all of our uh, all of our Robert <laughs> Jordan fans into of course. Nabokov. Of Maybe come on over and check They're basically out. the same. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you love one, you love the other. That, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> we might be taking it too far. <laughs> um, but, but now, of course, we're getting to the traveling people and the Mastiffs. Are they Team Dark One, right? As, as we talked what? about. No, they're like these they're... granola ish, like pacifists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Um, I mean, before we... I, I, I gush. Go, go ahead. Uh, oh, any, before you gush about them? Okay, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. have anything. No, you, you can go right into gushing, because uh, the only notes I had on this was, I did like this line um, with some nice right. alliteration, which we will get, mm. again, we'll get buried in when we go over to Lolita. So again, same author, same person. <laughs> can, yeah. It, it might have been a pseudonym. Like, who knows? Um, I, I think, think that's an accurate <laughs> guess. <laughs> I think Nabokov died about, like... <laughs> Uh, oh, 30 goodness. years before Robert Jordan wrote his book, but um, but did he? <laughs> but did he? exactly? exactly. <laughs> these are, these are big questions. Um, I also <laughs> had here that Egwene. This is the first time I feel like I had Egwene being like, "Oh, strangers, bad strangers." You know, right. I'm going to you know characterize this entire group of people as uh thieves mm -hmm. and i was like okay i guess i guess we're all like this huh all right <laughs> small town living bro small town living <laughs> um and that does that does lead into what i wanted to uh, talk about which is yes uh, this this chapter for me it just it it really highlights what i love so much about the story so i will just gush a little about again the the complexity of the world and the cultures. Um, you know, again, going, I've said before, that going through this with you and having to actually say aloud see my thoughts instead of just experiencing them, right, mm -hmm. um, has made me more aware of, of what it is I love in stories. And man, do I love seeing cultures from different perspectives. Not only, of course, seeing someone's expectations about a culture being flipped on their head, right, to a degree where, you know, you've got, as you said, in this case, Egwene saying, this, you know, uh, you know, opinion, which is probably going to be wrong because it's a blanket statement, and then getting, you know, laughed at for it, right? And then showing that they're these really nice people, right? So that's that's one thing. But then also 
just the layers of cultures. The fact that just a little ago we were getting this wolf culture, and then now we're getting this way of the leaf culture. And then you've got the way of the leaf culture telling a story about the Aiel culture with their like fighting women. <sighs> and Perrin's like, this is all just crazy. <laughs> You're crazy with the way of the leaf, you know. I'm going to hit somebody back. And then you tell you a story about another group that you don't approve of that to me is also crazy because they've got women fighting. What? And it's just like different cult, like one culture, way of the leaf, telling a story to a different culture parent about another culture. Aiel is just like, oh, yes, yes. Give me, give me this all day. Immerse me in this world of like people that have reasonable opinions about like their way of life. The fact that, you know, the tinkers sort of defend their way of life a little bit, but are like, no, we just answer questions. You know, it just, it feels like a world to me. So this this would be the world building stuff that people geek out about. There's a whole world building Reddit, you know, so on and so forth. Um, and I feel like this is world building done in an immersive way that's just super fun. And it's character based because it's about different people that live in these different well, cultures. So that's my, that's my gosh moment. All right. Uh, I feel like feel I should have used that uh, Spider-Man meme that I used on the last video for this one. <laughs> because, That's good close. lord, did I feel like... Well, I felt like that last chapter, and this chapter even more so. Mm. When you right. do this, be aware, it feels... It's going to feel to some readers like you're, you're pushing a giant pause button on your narrative and on your story mm. and this mm. i was not super immersed in i was like who are these people why do i give a <laughs> crap about these people spoiler warning i don't give a crap about these people because i don't really know like why sh why do i give a crap about these people and again i think there's maybe some mystery mystery going on because right. our man rayan you know alludes to something which, yes. by the way, I think we get the, the king of all Jordan ellipses in this chapter, which I've highlighted, so we can take a look uh, at. Please, please point me in the direction of that, obviously. <laughs> let's, let's just go ahead and find it right now, because I just remember <laughs> it. Uh, notice I have, like, no highlighting for vast swaths of, like, you just were, vast you, swaths of You were this. too engaged. You were too engaged <laughs> in the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, here's oh, here's where here's where I highlighted the part where parents starts falling asleep because I'm like I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. <laughs> you say it again. Uh, no, but he doesn't fall asleep. Well, wait, wait, wait. So actually, let's back that up for one second. Is that that is an interesting moment right there? So that's actually before we get into the story that I was talking about, right? This is just them like at a fire eating. They've heard a little bit about the way they leave, right? Yeah. Um, but this, yeah, it's it's a lull for sure. So were you, were you already feeling it there then? I oh, assume yeah. because because they're just going. We don't know where they're going to what White Bridge, and so there's nothing immediately happening for this crew. Like how do, how does this crew even fit into the overall narrative? Yeah, right. right. Um, like we're visiting so, these random like nice old people, mm -hmm. this nice old couple. Yeah, we're learning about their philosophy again. Like I don't really want characters just sitting there telling me their philosophy. I mean, that's cool and all, but like, it's not a story. It's just like, and the philosophy doesn't sound like anything totally blowing my mind. It sounds like pretty boilerplate, you know, yeah. pacifism with, yeah, the nice, um, the nice metaphor of the leaf just goes wherever it's pushed. But I feel like I've heard that like somewhere else too, like the leaf on the water, just taking yeah. like the path of least resistance like it didn't it didn't strike me as something like oh i've never heard this before or this is an idea that is n really novel to me it just kind of felt like okay yeah there there's these nice old people um and they're pacifists and they know elias and then yeah so then here he starts falling asleep and and i'm like so am i and then we we do get i think this is kind of cooler world building with the aiel yeah. And this group that we've sort of heard alluded to before, right. and like the right. crew of uh, women who went to like kill all these Trollocs and stuff. And I was like, okay, right. it's still like second hand though, you know? Like, right. in a movie, at least like you'd be able to just be there in the battle and you, you could be like, it's like happening mm. firsthand, where here it just has to be recounted back as a story. And like, I wasn't. Yeah, this is where I'm like, we can, 
we can turn down on the the world building a little bit for my taste but i know again it's not written for me it's written for you and you eat this up but it's just so funny the difference right like in the reaction well, that's, uh, yeah that that's what's great have. to talk about mm -hmm. no completely and that's that's what i love the why we're having this conversation right because there's a reason why you know you and other people haven't read this book right mm -hmm. because what maybe you just don't read fantasy because of you know brickish tomes like this that have a lot of world building it's like no thanks and you've seen that before or even if you start reading you're like not too much world building right mm -hmm. uh, but then obviously there's a whole crew of people that that want to be immersed and i and i know that you like fantasy sci-fi stuff mm -hmm. right like mm -hmm. obviously right like you've got the comics background and, and even other things so it's like there are versions of fantasy that appeal to you mm -hmm. right but it, it's not this dial generally speaking where there's where this is extra stuff and it is interesting to me to see like which world building kind of sneaks by and is cool right mm -hmm. versus which ones feel like we're lingering and yeah some people are like having a buffet and it's the greatest moment of their life like me and then other people are like where's the story mm -hmm. <laughs> like, where wasn't there a plot Right. somewhere in this right Some, somewhere we had something we were working toward uh because i do i do get what you're saying from like a analytical perspective of the plot of the story seems to be the dark one trying to chase and, and capture the prophesized person that we think is ran pretty sure what's going on and so even if on paper you're like hey you know what i'm gonna do we're going to stop following the person that we think is the point. We're just going to do some side quest stuff, right? right? And it's like, oh, okay, are you doing side quest stuff because they're doing something, like, crazy important? You're like, no, nah, you're just going to kind of, like, <laughs> wander out. around, be lost, wonder if the other people are alive or not. You know, just chill. Maybe meet some wolves. And you'd be like, um, excuse me? What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> we were talking about, like, a script, right? And that's why, I mean... For the long term, th this stuff matters, right? Like this, right. this is the slowest build ever. And <laughs> I've realized that even among people that are, are part of, I'm going to finish this up soon, but the part of people that like progression fantasy, right? That like to see people like level up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, Wheel of Time should be your thing, right? But then I realized, wait a second, <laughs> it takes like multiple massive novels <laughs> for people to to level up you know um and in, in ways i like that because that feels more real but obviously reality is not a benchmark of what everyone's going to like to uh, consume as you know a product of a book movie so on and so forth mm -hmm. um so anyway my point here is just that i do get that this is this is slow and it can feel like how does this connect right or like why does this matter so i i hear what you're saying i do and yeah talking about that uh that contrast between us of where the world building works for me and I love it and where it's like that uh, for you. I was curious about this, this mystery yet again, right? Like how much do we care about this sentence of, uh, you know, sight burner comes mm -hmm. stand ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's meant to tie back to the story, like from a, from oh, a writing sure. perspective. Yeah. Right. I feel like that's meant to be your plot moment. Right. And so I, I do want to take a moment to just talk about, does that work? Right. Like, is that, is that enough? Is it so nebulous? It's like, who cares? What did you, what did you think about that part? Oh yeah. I want to get into that. But, but first I want to say, thank you, Jeff, Ooh. for making me feel so seen right there. <laughs> I was just thinking like when you were going through that, like that, that thing that, you know, people advocate you're supposed to do, like, if you right. are in an argument with somebody, you should first be forced to be able to characterize their right. side to them in a way that they would agree with, right? Like, that should be the yeah. prerequisite of, of having your argument with someone. And I was like, you just, you just did it perfectly. You just nailed <laughs> exactly how I feel. Um, and to talk about world building, I guess, like, my theory of world building is almost that it should... Mm never be like directly done that it works best when it's like a, a part of the description of you know organically what's happening in a scene where you have something at stake where people are making decisions 
and then this sure. is just at the world that they're in. So by, you know, you can't have a scene without having objects, without having props, without having things that people are looking at and seeing, and that's, then you, you build it in there. Um, mm -hmm. more so than I feel like telling stories about history or about past or about stuff like that. At least for me, that's how it works better. Almost like mm -hmm. it's invisible um, and you just sense it through the story happening. I, um, I think and it's I think, definitely a more... And I think Jordan does that too, you know, but I think yeah. sometimes it gets a little talky. Yeah, I would say that I think that's more the normal way that it's done and and definitely more in like shorter works, right? Mm -hmm. So if we take a look at YA, which is normally forced to be fewer words, uh, that has to happen, right? You know, there's this idea of uh, I got to keep the, the young reader's interest. I can't, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. go off on this, you know, uh, crazy philosophical side thing. Um, and also the same, of course, with movies, right? Just production budgets, you know, you can't have a million scenes. And that's why, you know, I continue to be so fascinated about what they're going to show in this. You know, we finally got uh, a release date for season one. It's going to come out in November. Oh. They've already started. Yeah, so it's oh, going to be dang. here soon. We got to start yeah. reading faster. I know, we do. We got to finish this. I mean, we'll, we'll finish the end of it before they finish the end. But it's fascinating because they're completely billing it as like Moraine's story, right? And they're, they're going to still pull doing it, that. Like, yeah, yeah. No, she's on the poster. It's like her on the poster, well, right? Well, she's so the big star, though. I mean, I understand yeah. why you would put her, because she, I'm about to say, like, she's a name actor, and I can't tell you. Oh, Rosalind Pike. Um, yeah. Who's, mm -hmm. you know, okay, not, like, super A-list, but, like, at least she's right. the one actor yeah. in, in the thing that I could name off the top of my head. So I understand putting sure. her on the poster. I don't think that doesn't mean Rand won't be your main character that you're following at least for the beginning you know i think well they've said that they're making it more focused on the rain they, oh, they, they straight up said it yeah they've said that oh, okay. and so there is a prequel that focuses more on here so apparently they're gonna pull some from the prequel book a new spring uh but yeah i'm, I'm fascinated so like let's say Moraine is the, the main character, right? right? And so then you're seeing the interactions through kind of her perspective, right? They're obviously going to have to do some breakaways, of course. Um, and then so Rand would seem like the next biggest. So then it leaves a question like this, right? So if, if the narrative is following Moraine is key, right? And then you've got this, like how long will they spend on a side side character at that point? You People know, are it's gonna not be mad, great. man. People are going to be mad. I mean, well, like no matter what, see. you're cutting a lot. So people are going to be mad, like no matter what. And and I, oh, sure. as if I was a huge fan of this, I would be like, look, I'm going to put aside being mad that we don't mention <laughs> King so-and-so from wherever the heck, right, you know, right. like, because there's, there's like just no way. Um, right. But... Yeah, it sounds really wild to me because in the narrative, we're dropping Moraine. And as I was reading this, I'm like, I, I yeah. totally see this bouncing back and forth between Rand and Perrin for a while. Because like yeah. I made my prediction before, I predict we're never getting Moraine as a, as a POV character because we need to keep her mysterious at least for like a decent right. while longer. So to say like the show is going to revolve around her, she's the one I feel... I'm least likely to get a POV chapter about out of everyone. I know it's fascinating, right? So I can't wait. I can't wait to see how That's this all wild. shakes out. But um, but yeah. So with uh, I'm glad to hear one you feel seen about it because I, I do get what you're saying. Um, and I think for me is that the deep I I feel you on the like if I was watching a movie, I, I want it happening or it's like a TV show, like I want it during, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that is also, uh, you know, I agree. I, I think he does that and I think they will be able to pare it down to that, mm -hmm. right? Um, but for me, the joy of a book, uh, assuming I'm liking it, like the world is getting to, to dive into that culture and see, I think what I like about this is it sets up conflict in cultural beliefs, right? Mm -hmm. That you're going from the extreme of no fighting at all to the extreme of women fighting mm -hmm. and parents worldview exists somewhere in the in the middle and mm -hmm. i like this idea of people needing to to think about other people's worldviews and potentially change their own um and i do wonder if some of the philosophical aspects of this uh, have led to part of the longevity of this series mm -hmm. people will bring up uh depression and the way characters deal with it here 
um, and other other aspects of just like real world relationship to life. So I think that's one of the fascinating things fantasy can potentially do and make them make people look at things from a different perspective, like how we're showing, you know, you know, Egwene was wrong about the traveling people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, could that be a parallel for something in our own lives, right? You know, obviously, of course. But anyway, to the other line, though, uh, well, one, you've got the ellipses to show me. And then we've got the other line. Well, yeah, because it it goes back to this point that if this is what my plot beat is tying me back to the story, yeah, it's mm-hmm. not very satisfied by this because I think like yeah. even these words that I, I don't know what they are, leaf blader, um, great mm-hmm. serpent, we we talked about the, the right. dark one said I'm gonna <laughs> strangle you with the, <laughs> with the great serpent, which I think maybe <laughs> is my favorite part of the book so far. Um, it's pretty amazing. Sight really burner. Is. But I think then we're told like right away after that both of these are the dark one, the leaf blader right. and the sight burner. And then here it is, ladies and gentlemen tell them dot 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 and then she died <laughs> yeah. i laughed no. out loud laughed right out there. loud this is the this is the key this is the apogee right here the the yep. number one robert jordan ellipse right there mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it sums up everything that the ellipses is meant to be in, in this story <laughs> Do you like, think she it, survives, yeah. right? She, like, crawls all right. the way to them just oh, to tell okay. them this one thing. Just to tell them this one thing, these people she hates. And then yep. uh, she 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 doesn't quite spit it out. <laughs> nope. Only gets, only gets to the good stuff and then dies. <laughs> Maybe right? if she spent a little less time <laughs> all this before it, she would have gotten to the important part uh, to talk about. Uh, uh, well... It does seem that it could be that she's saying, tell them the thing I just said, yeah. potentially. Oh, God. It, the phrasing is funny, though, mm. because it does seem like she's about to say, tell them, here's the real thing. Right. And she does. Because okay. everything she <laughs> says here is just stuff we kind of know. Yeah, Dark One wants to do bad things, right? Like, what is... <sighs> yeah, well, I think what... So, sorry, if you were finished there. No, I mean, I guess if the Great Serpent is the Wheel of Time, we want to slay the time somehow, you know, um, uh, blind the eye of the world. I don't know. These just sound like generic bad things to me. Maybe they, like, have this real big, deeper significance. But right now, this just sounds like, yeah, Dark One, bad. Uh, Better tell everybody that. And I'm like, sister, I think they all know that the dark one right. is pretty bad. So yeah, what, what we're talking about now is really, really interesting to me because what I think this is meant to show is we, we know more than they do. And, and what I mean by that is since we're following Rand and company, right, or mm-hmm. Rand and company, as the show will be, we're seeing the resurgence of the dark one, right? Like we're mm-hmm. seeing... Oh, wow, Trollocs invaded a place that there's no way Trollocs should be able to get to at all by invading, like, the Two Rivers. Mm-hmm. And they would only be doing that at the behest of, like, Dark One's agents, which would only be happening if the Dark One was coming back alive. And then we're getting dreams with the Dark One, so Dark One is back, so on and so forth, right? And so what I think this is meant to show is it's happening elsewhere, too. The idea of, oh, yeah, we know the Dark One's back because we're having people that are talking to him basically. Um, But now other places are seeing things that are similar. So the idea is that we as reader have info that the the characters don't. Mm. But it's definitely not as obvious, right? Like if this was talking about the Dark One stole a boy of Rand's age from this town, Mm. right? And we started to hear more about that mm. like boys of rands and parents age were hunted across the nation mm. we'd be like or the world right we'd be like oh wow those are some crazy parallels and we're just seeing one of them um but this one is more just like he's back kind of thing right right um but but yeah it's not I, obvious again right? even that like you know would would be just telling us stuff we already know so it's like completely it's I guess interesting that, you know, this is happening. We already know it's happening all over, though. Like, so this can't be, like, the plot point thing that's supposed to be, like, my point of interest (laughs) in this chapter, since it's literally something I already know. You know what I mean? Right. 
No, I mean, I hear you. I, I would say <laughs> I would maybe replace can't with not effective. Right? <laughs> like, um, I, do, I do think this is meant to be here as like a little, it's all connected. It's you, this is happening across the world kind of thing. But does that work right to the reader? Like, does that create the engagement? For me, I think it is like it's an excuse to tell me about another culture. And so I'm cool with it. And it's an excuse to be like, Hey, it is happening other places. This is bigger than you might have thought it was. And to me, that's cool. But I do get from a, again, plot-driven focus mm. that if, if that's the guy, like, yeah, this isn't... If I was just interested in, like, okay, what what happens next? Like, this would not be... It's it's too ambiguous. It's too up in the air. And, yeah, it feels like something we already know. Yeah. So, and then, and that. then like, he says... Ryan says we can't even understand it. Right. Like, uh, I, I mean, yeah, yeah maybe he doesn't um but we do i don't know that also made me think like that that she was about to spit something else out <laughs> like much more illuminating oh, um right, than uh, right. than she actually did uh but i mean maybe she wasn't maybe that was the whole message uh but i, I that was ambiguous and uh, again kind of kind of perfectly robert jordan-ish to to be that <laughs> ambiguous um and then like uh, so then here's the real mystery, right, of the chapter, oh, yeah. where he's like, mm-hmm. we thought, you know, because you were, and I was like, why not dot, dot, dot here? We're, we're, we're flipping it up a little bit with the, uh, right, the right. M-dash yep. instead, but it's essentially another Robert Jordan ellipses where he decides not to say what he was about to say and flips it to a friend and know of many right. strange things. So now we have this added mystery Huzzah yep. for Elias. Um, exactly. And then you've even got Perrin underscoring it by thinking about it. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, but then, after that, <laughs> we then go back to uh, just sort of the characters uh, and kind of a cool moment. But just before I get to that, I was just going to say that I think, again, that's the thing that, you know, uh, Rayen, for instance, the seeker of this troop, doesn't have dreams of the dark one saying i'm going to strangle with the great serpent right mm-hmm. so they're like, why would they be talking about the great serpent why would they be talking about eye of the world but it is interesting to me that you know that that isn't expounded upon here that they're not asking like what is the eye of the world what is the uh what is the great serpent um if they don't know like they don't say the part that they don't understand right, right? they imply it they imply it by saying, well, I do know Sightburner and Leaf right. mean this, but we don't Things know the rest. that I didn't right? know, right? So, like, I knew it's, what Eye of the World trading. and Great Serpent is, but I didn't know mm-hmm. these Leaf Blader and whatever mm-hmm. until, like, they tell me the next sentence that that means Dark One and Aiel or whatever. Oh, maybe you're getting the pieces to the whole then. Right. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But I was going to say the end is sweet. I, I like, I feel like we do this as people where, uh, you know, with our experience, then when we see someone, we're like, oh, you remind me of. So I like, I like Perrin thinking about, like, this guy, Aram, reminding him of Willisine. And, mm. and I continue to like the conceit of each of the guys thinking the other guy is better with girls. I don't know. I just love that. Yeah, well, um, I hate that because I was yeah. like, you're so, you're so wrong, bro. And I don't like, I don't quite know how he's this wrong. Rand would know what to do. Rand would know what the hell to do. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. Rand would, I know what to do. I'm going to ignore her. <laughs> that would be, that would be what Rand would do. Uh, so, and, uh, and then we get the wolves, which you can't go wrong with. We can't course. go wrong with. All right. So, yeah, so there we are. Uh, some world building. I'm, I'm excited to see. Let's see. Are we going back to, I think we're going back to Tom and Rand and everybody. So yeah. maybe they will reach somewhere on their painfully slow river journey. And uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, they'll reach somewhere. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, White Bridge. This is where they were going, right? So, boom, we're there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Exactly. Let's do it. We get a town. Let's, no more boring rivers. <laughs> let's do it. All right, everybody. We'll see you. See you next time. I was just going to say. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll see you next time, Bob. <laughs> see ya.